Hallo Leute, ich bin Katja und ihr seht Deutsch für euch. This week we are skipping a grammar episode, because up till now, every time we did something a little out of order, the vocabulary side had to suffer. Ho 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 ho! It's just not fair! I absolutely agree. So as usual, we'll still stay on the plan track after this, which means that next week's episode will be vocabulary. What we're doing today is something a lot of you guys have been asking for, which is... Which German bands I can recommend for you to listen to? And I've been looking forward to doing this for a while now. I don't know if this is the perfect time for it, but you know what, what the hell, you can still get back to this after you've gotten a bit further in your studies. Now, I've put together a list of bands that mostly sing in German from as many different genres as I could. I don't listen to all of these, but certainly to the bigger part that I will introduce to you. I don't really like recommending stuff that I personally don't um, enjoy listening to. There are a few th other things in here, but, you know. Um, don't expect a complete list. For a complete list, go to Wikipedia. She knows much better than I do. I just put together a few things that I like um, and that I think will be good for practicing German. I've sorted them by genre, which is a stupid word. I hate saying it in German already. In English it's even worse. And within that, alphabetically. If they have one, I'll post a link to the YouTube channel or their homepage. Okay, so let's go. Let's start off with louder, punky stuff. My first band here would be Die Ärzte, one of Germany's most popular bands overall and definitely um, one of the biggest punk rock bands we have. They have been around for quite a while, they're pretty old by now, but they're still, you know, they're still doing their thing and they're still great. By now they have just like a ton of, of songs. Their lyrics are very, um, well, very funny. They like to play with words and I think that's always a good way to learn German or to learn any language, sorry. The next band is Bakushan. They're a very young and very popular band. I wouldn't call what they do punk. Um, they are very, you know, it's kind of indie, alternative, poppy punk kind of stuff. You know, it's fun music, you can dance to it, you can jump around to it. I wouldn't call their, their lyrics uh, literally valuable, but, you know, they're fun. So if you're into that kind of music and that's the thing that counts here, check them out. Then we have Farin Urlaub, the guitarist of Die Ärzte. He's probably the most popular one of the three. It's very, very similar to the style of the whole band, um, but he's definitely worth checking out as a solo artist as well um, and just kind of adds to the whole Ärzte experience. The next band is Kraftklub. Um, it's kind of a colloquial term for a fitness studio. The music that they do, I would put them with uh, Bakushan. They're relatively... Um, young, they're a um, relatively new band, they had their breakthrough over the course of the last two years and um, they're pretty loud uh, but they're pretty fun and the lyrics are pretty funny and also often about topics that you don't really find in music that often. They have one song about Ritalin. The next one, and I can't believe I'm bringing this up because I'm probably gonna get stoned by German teenagers watching this or German people my age watching this, Tokyo Hotel. You might have heard of them, um, they got really big really fast in Germany and also around the world. Um, four guys from northeastern Germany, um, very controversial uh, for the first few years they were out, kind of, you know, um, like Justin Bieber. It wasn't really because of their music, it was just because a lot of teeny girls loved them and loved them to death. The music they do is kind of rocky, alternative, I don't know. It's not really hard stuff, it's, you know, pretty easy to listen to. I can't say their their lyrics are really, you know, anything notable. If you're looking for a really, like, quality German lyrics, they wouldn't be your go-to thing. But I'm just mentioning them here. Because I think if you if you if you concern yourself like if you if you're gonna get into German music you should have heard of them at least. Die Toten Hosen, um, rather similar to Die Ärzte. Their style is different from Die Ärzte, but you can put them in the same corner. Their name means the dead pants, which just sounds funny on it on its own. But if you say something is Tote Hose, it means it's you know it's just you can just leave like you go to a party and it's total hose you just you go somewhere else it's just it's done you don't want to be there and then last in the punk category is Viso. um they are very like true to form classic punk you know it's it's loud it's always it, it always kind of sounds the same and the lyrics are very um 
very red. <laughs> then let's move on to generic pop and stuff like that. Now with this genre, you know, I can't really say much about the individual artists. It's not really my kind of thing. I have songs that I like, but generally it's a bit too meh. <laughs> doesn't have enough character for me. Um, but I will name a few. Andreas Burani, he had like he had a big song a few years ago, Alles nur in meinem Kopf, so everything's just in my head. He has a really nice voice. I also like his instrumental parts, like the, you know, just the whole how the song sounds. The lyrics aren't really anything that special, I can't say, but um, yeah, he's worth giving a try. Next up is Annette Louisanne. She has this voice that sounds like that of a small 14 year old. It's kind of cute. It has it's really like you hear her once and you will recognize her every time. Her music kind of sounds like as if you're standing in a in a doll store. Like delicate and, and nice and soft and um but it has a certain melancholy to it, like a certain I wouldn't say sadness. You kind of get a little heartache. And it's kind of what her songs are most of the time as well. It's nothing heavy, but um there's always a certain a bit of thinking, a bit of a bit of maybe even poetic um, nuance to it. So that's kind of what she does. Then we have Herbert Grönemeyer. He's been around for quite a while, 30 years, 20 years, I don't know, quite a while. And he's he's like everybody's at least heard the name. Not everybody likes his music, but he's definitely worth mentioning. He's one of the big guys here. He has a very um, well, unique voice, but there's a lot of variation in the lyrics that he writes. He has fun songs, he has sad songs, he has blah blah blah, you know, he's been he's been around and he's done the spectrum and um, he's worth checking out once again if you really want to get into German music because you just, you kind of have to know the name. Then we have Ich und Ich, so me and me, a guy and a woman. Once again, generic pop. Um, lyrics aren't bad, but they're unexceptional. Um, Nina, nine and nine, say love belongs. Nuff said. Philip was it? A uh, kind of a smoky voice, kind of sad to like nostalgic, melancholy um, lyrics. If you're in an emotional state, you might start crying just because he always sounds like he's about to start crying. Certainly good music for snuggling. Xavier Naidu and uh, the band he's been with for a while, Zune Mannheim, so Sons of Mannheim. Um, which is where he's from. He's uh, kind of like he's very popular. He's very, you know, he has a lot of fans. He has um, a very notable voice, like a very unique uh, and great voice. His songs tend to sound rather similar to one another. He kind of goes for a poetic angle, philosophical angle on many of them, um, and also kind of sk often uh, squeezes like a, a religious aspect in there. Um, I wouldn't call it bad music, but you have to get used to what he sings about, or you have to like it, that's the best option. And then lastly we have Seed. Seed is like a reggae dancehall band, and um, it's another band which I appreciate and recommend for this whole thing, because they really play with words, and they um, like to put, like, they like to make things rhyme nicely. Their frontman, Peter Fox, also does solo things, um, very similar to what Seed does. They also sing in English, um, but they have a lot of German material. Then let's get on to rap, hip-hop. First we have Casper. He has a voice that constantly makes me want to clear my throat, but that's kind of his trademark. He does raps, but it's often not really like the, the fast-paced, rappy stuff, but it's more it's kind of like poetry with a background track, kind of shouted, <laughs> but it's not, it's not meant to be angry or anything, it's just, you know, it's his voice that kind of makes for that. He really blew up over the last few years. If you like kind of the alternative side of rap, you should really check him out. Next we have Crow. He kind of does like fun raps. Luckily Germany's gotten past the big gangster rap recession of 2006. The rap that is popular nowadays um, is like the fun stuff and the poetic stuff and the, you know, stuff that kind of goes to your head and your heart. Then we have the Fantastic and Fear, so the Fantastic Four. Um, they've been around for quite a while. They were gone for quite a while and then they came back. Um, so they've put out a lot of songs. They've, they have this kind of upbeat rap thing going on. Um, so it's more for fun as well. 
it's kind of, you know, there's nothing special really there. They also like to play with the words, as you do. Um, and, uh, yeah. Also something, like, also a name you should know, I think. Then we have Tic-Tac-Toe. They're not around anymore. They were a girl band of, from the 90s. They had a lot of controversy about them because they were constantly bitch fighting each other. They have rather recognizable voices. I personally like their songs. They have a certain, like, really biting sense of humor to them, or generally they're very biting, just in general. Then let's get on to medley, rock, the even louder stuff. ASP. Um, I don't really know what genre to put them in, to be honest. Let me look it up. Wikipedia calls it electro rock or dark rock, so let's just go with that. They often concentrate on their lyrics a lot, um, although the music is not to be underestimated. They kind of also have this kind of poetic angle. They can be loud, but they can also be kind of not not soft, but you know, quiet, calm. Equilibrium. They have like the most epic melodies ever, but it's more of a recommendation, you know, if you're into that kind of stuff and if, maybe you already know them if you're, you know, a fan of the genre um, and you never really realized they were German because, well, you know, there are lyrics, but you can't really hear them. Go check them out and you'll see what I mean. JBO. They do a lot of covers. Um, they also have original songs, but they cover a lot of things, um, and what they do is they, they don't necessarily cover, but they, like, they make a parody of stuff. So, for example, they would take an American, English, whatever, hit song, change the pop genre to the rock or metal genre, and change the lyrics. So, take the English ones, make, um, and make German lyrics that are either a funny translation of the English ones, or just a complete, you know, parody on what the song originally was saying. They're funny! They're from Bavaria, um, they're, you know, I like them, but they're kind of, you know, they take some getting used to, but they're really funny. Oomph! Hard rock, like, they're kind of dark, it's kind of electronic at times as well. They kind of make the perfect transition for the next band, which is Rammstein, also a very popular German band, I'm sure. Um, some of you have heard of them already. Very loud, very dark, kind of twisted sounding at times. They have this very recognizable singer that makes everything sound kind of evil, especially if you don't speak German because he rolls his R and he always speaks like this. Once again, you have to know them. You don't have to like them, but you should know them. Saltatio Mortis, so the Dance of the Dead. They do like folk metal stuff, so they're pretty loud, but they bring in like the folky um, melodies and all that. Their lyrics mostly concern medieval topics. Similar things kind of go for the next band, which I want to put a special emphasis on for a few reasons. They're called Schandmaul, and I've loved them for a few years. Um, to like them, you kind of have to be into the medieval um, melody stuff, although I can never understand who you couldn't be. That's kind of a requirement. You know, they kind of do this medieval, um, folky music, and their lyrics are filled with medieval th themes again, mostly. They only sing in German, to my knowledge, at, at least everything I know of them is in German. And the great thing about them is that I think their German is really, like, they, they really use good German. And it's very understandable, and they have a lot of slow songs, so they're easy to follow, they're really understandable. So I think they would be really good for practice, especially if you, like, if you read along. I, I definitely recommend those if you like the style of music at all. They don't put that much of an emphasis on metal, so they are much more compatible with the, the, the general public. So you don't have to be worried about your ears being, you know, blown up every time you listen to them. They have a few louder songs, but the focus is with the folky side, not with the metal side. And then we have a group of artists that I can't really um, assign a real genre to. We have a cappella stuff here and just, you know, um, stuff that I think is good for you for this purpose because it's about the language. All of these won't really have a point if you don't understand that much yet because the music is not the main thing. So, you know. But later on it's good for practicing your understanding. First of all, we have Bodo Vatka. What he does is he basically he goes on stage and he plays on his piano and then he sings um, songs with uh, really like well thought out rhymes. He's somewhat of a comedian. Uh, we call it cabaretist. So he talks about political themes sometimes, social themes, and just you know other things and makes them funny. The way he plays with language is really interesting and I think um, a good way to kind of make you know 
to um to make yourself attentive for um how you can you know form sentences and how you can change them and all that stuff. Then we have Fanny Van Dunen. Um, kind of similar, he plays on the guitar, um, and it's once again it's mostly about the lyrics. They're a bit strange, they're funny, but they're kind of a bit bizarre at times. Then we have Die Prinzen. They are an uh, a cappella band, so the only thing they don't do with their mouths are is their uh, percussion. And normally one of them sings, and the rest does the instrumentalization with the moths. And then we have the wise guys. They are completely a cappella, so they don't even do the percussion with percussion instruments, but with their mouths. They got really popular over the last few years. Once again, the lyrics are easy to understand. Of course, you need the words, but it's nothing complicated and constructed. Okay, and that's my list. Uh, things that add to it, of course, are any, like any Disney song. Um, as, like, the better you know it in English, the better. Y you know what they're saying, and of course it's not a literal translation because that doesn't work, but of course they're always going to try to say about the same thing. And if you have a base of knowledge of German, they can use to kind of patch up the stuff that is not exactly the same. Um, I think that will help you make a, a huge step uh, one at a time. So, um, and they're all, you know, you can all find them easily on YouTube or somewhere else on the internet. So, um, yeah. Uh, definitely try that if you still like Disney. Okay, and that's it for today. I hope this is helpful to you and you will find something that you like. If you don't, I will try to find something else for you, but I think there should be at least one band in here with at least a few songs that everybody can enjoy. Your random word of the week is... Fächer. Bis nächste Woche. Tschüss! <laughs>